This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. For animal lovers, by animal lovers. Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. I'm down in Arlington, Texas at the NARBC Reptile Show. Let's head inside and see what cool animals are in there. You're watching Snake Bites. Reptile conventions like the NARBC go on all over the country and thousands of people come in to see these animals and people travel from all over the country with some amazing animals. It's my job to go find the coolest things and show them to you. I'll tell you what, this is a great time. Let's go check it out. Now this is an amazing example of the cycle of life right here. What we have in my right hand is a blue bar umbilibay panther chameleon. And what a gorgeous animal it is. And take a look at this little guy here. This is two weeks old and it's a little baby. Where are you going, buddy? I only have one arm, so I can't do a whole lot with these guys. Now as you can see, chameleons are absolutely stunningly spectacular, but look at how small they start out, and they certainly don't have nearly the color that the adults have. What a cute little monkey that is. They still have those independent eyes, and they move around with that really slow pace. And of course, that long tongue makes them such incredible predators. And you can see how he's kind of starting to just kind of grab my arm. That's with that prehensile tail. And again, chameleons will certainly lighten and darken over time, but they can't actually change their colors. This is one beautiful animal, I tell you what, and a beautiful baby to boot. What is the Texas State Reptile? A, the Texas Horned Lizard, B, the Texas Indigo, or C, the Texas Rat Snake? Go ahead and answer down below in the comments and check back later in the show to see if you have the right answer. For this week's Reptile Report Spotlight, we'll be highlighting chameleons. Go ahead and check out the URL down below or click on the link in the description. All right, guys, I have something that's a little bit of a challenge for me. You guys know that I'm kind of freaked out. Oh my God, these are so creepy. These are actually roaches, believe it or not. And we actually, oh my God, I can barely touch these things. I'm trying so hard to pick these up right now for you guys. So this is actually a Madagascan hissing cockroach right here and these guys can get pretty large they could probably get about twice this size and i tell you they're kind of cool now the madagascan hissing cockroaches can be used for a food source but they're kind of a slow production little bug so oftentimes these are actually kept as pets believe it or not and i tell you they are a little bit cute but the other species we have here are actually dubia roaches that come from south america and these are typically bred for a food source. Now what's interesting about these guys is their reproduction's a lot different than the roaches than you'd say that would have in a house from the fact that they only have at the maximum about 100 babies per month. So they're certainly not gonna infest your house. It's also interesting that they internally carry the eggs and they actually have live young. They call them nymphs until they're adult size. And look at how crazy this is. Now I know you're thinking, but what happens if these things get out? Well, a couple cool things about these little guys, these guys can't even climb this plastic tub, so you don't have to worry about them getting out. The other thing that's great is they need to be kept about 80 or 82 degrees with pretty high humidity, so if they ever get out in your house, they pretty much can't live, so you don't have to worry about it. These guys are definitely little creepy animals. And I hear they're really good for feeding bearded dragons and leopard geckos and the whatnot, but tell you what, I'm still kind of freaked out about bugs, but if you ever want a cool, creepy bug, a roach might be your answer. Now this is a pretty interesting boa here. This is a Dominican mountain boa, and you certainly don't see these around too often. They're endemic to Hispaniola, and they're an Epicrate striatus striatus. Now what's interesting about this little guy is, believe it or not, when I was 16 years old, it was one of the very first snakes that I bred at a pet shop I worked at. 
But unfortunately, the gravid female got loose just before she had her litter of live young and had her babies inside a wall. We were finding little babies just like this for about a month. I don't know what the final tally was, but we found 18 babies. Quite typically, animals of adult size will have anywhere from 12 all the way up to 30 babies, and they're relatively polymorphic. There's a few different mutations going on now with hypos and yellows and reds. These guys are absolutely gorgeous. Although you don't see these guys around a lot, they do very well in captivity. Typically an animal this size will take a fuzzy mouse. The really picky ones just might need a gecko or lizard scent to get them started, but once they get going, they're really cool. And the breeding part of these is pretty interesting too. They actually group breed, kind of like a garter snake, believe it or not. So typically in the wild, you may find two or three males and five or six females grouped in one group, all tangled up into a breeding copulation situation. I tell you, it's just kind of cool to see an animal that I worked with so many different years ago. What a beautiful snake. I've had the pleasure of messing with a lot of scrubby pythons or amethystines, but this is the first one I've seen from a specific locality. They come from a whole host of islands all over Indonesia and some even into Australia. But this is a completely new island that I had never seen before and it's such an unusual snake. I've never really seen one do this before. It's just kind of coming up and most likely it's sensing the heat from my breath and it's trying to check it out with those amazing heat pits. But this is actually from a tannin bar island and I've never seen one like this before because typically the scrubbies will be almost patternless on the back of their body. This almost looks more like a carpet python's pattern, which is really unusual. And again, I've never seen this locality ever before, so it's really a pleasure to get to handle something like this. Now this particular type of amethystine is typically gonna get about eight to nine feet long and about maybe this big around. And you can certainly tell by the way it climbs that it's an arboreal snake. And they typically have that really big head and some pretty gnarly teeth as well. So you don't wanna take a bite from one of these guys, but you can see this one is puppy dog tame. And it's just kind of checking me out, wondering what's going on. <laughs> this is an awesome snake. Now this guy is a fun little animal here. This is a toke gecko, but not really a normal toke gecko because normally they have much more blue with small red dots. This one obviously has an amazing amount of red in them, so it's kind of a new mutation. Now these guys are from Southeast Asia and they are really, really upset. You do not want to get bit by one of these guys because they hold on really hard and you typically have one stuck on your hand for a good five minutes and they leave some pretty good marks. I'm telling you what, and their eyes kind of roll in the back of their head. But these guys can get about 12 inches long body length and you can see, look at how they just kind of stick on to you. So these guys are really good climbers and they climb up walls, glass, whatever it is. They'll typically have two eggs four to six times per year. And now there's quite a few mutations starting to be bred. So it's a really cool animal, but again, really a display animal, not something that you're gonna wanna carry around as a pet for sure because you can see that mouth is open and it's just ready to go and if I got my nose too close oh man it would just grab it and it would hang on oh wow just look inside that mouth right there look at how cool that is now these are insectivores so pretty much anything that comes around they're going to eat them they'll even eat little lizards as well I've always loved toke geckos even though they have this really incredibly upset attitude you never know what you're gonna run into at a pet shop. And last year, I remember I came across Grant at the Fish Pearl Pet Express, and he had a really unique bird, right? It was missing part of its beak. His name is Pumpkin. Pumpkin, remember that? It was a great animal. And this year, of course, what does he have? A beautiful ringtail lemur. And of course, this little guy in here, a little, come on, little buddy. Where are you at? It's a little wallaby. Look at this cute little guy right here. So tell me a little bit about the ringtail. She's well, just born this, this year, is, right? This is Lucy. She was born uh, March 21st. They're definitely not for everybody. They do require a lot of attention and you cannot potty train them. Right, and a so. lot of people make the mistake of thinking these are monkeys, but right. they're actually not primates, they're persimmons, yes, right? Yes, correct. Exactly. Now, what is she gonna eat? Uh, she'll eat uh, monkey biscuits, different types like leaf eater diet, high, pro, uh, high protein sticks, high fiber sticks. Uh, and then she'll eat fresh fruit like grapes, bananas, yeah. apples, 
uh, and then she'll eat some veggies. Well, she certainly seems to be a lovey animal there. Yeah. And then tell me about this little wallaby. You know, now, most people realize that the first year of their life, they typically live in a pouch, right? And so, are you nursing it, or is it past that stage? Yes, uh, we are still bottle feeding it. This is a Bennett's wallaby. There's a there's a lot of different types of wallabies. Yeah. Bennett's are a little bit larger. The um, the damas they only get about like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they're a lot smaller. They're more of a realistic wallaby, but these guys are a little bit more cuddly. So oh my gosh! They, I, I like tell you them. what, <laughs> they are so absolutely cute. And again, you never know what you're going to find at a reptile show. And these guys have killed me with cuteness. Every time I travel to these shows, I'm blown away at these amazing animals. But it's the people I meet that leave a lasting impression. To even be able to spend a few minutes showing people how much everyone's support means to me makes these shows that much more special. So here I am with one of the coolest herpers in this place right now. This is Peyton. And how old are you, Peyton? Four. She's four years old, and she knows more about snakes than Probably I do, quite frankly. She was just telling me all about this animal. Tell me a little bit. What is this again? A lavender albino spinner. A lavender albino spinner. And what is it? This is your favorite snake in the show? Yes. Oh my gosh. And what do you like about it so much? I like it because it's my favorite color. It has just oranges and I like the colors. Well, I tell you what, she's an absolute snake lover. And for four years old, it's amazing her knowledge. When she was over at my table, you said, didn't you tell me, didn't it look like it has pastel in it for a snake? Yeah. I tell you what, it, <laughs> I think that I have a new host for the show for sure. I'll see you guys later. She's going to take you around for the rest of the show. <laughs> These are actually very interesting animals. These are called puff-faced water snakes. They're endemic to Vietnam and even over into Indonesia. And they're just a very unusual animal. I'm even crawling through my fingers. They don't grip on whatsoever. They're almost a little more eel-like than they are actually snake-like. Now, the way these guys are actually collected over in Vietnam, believe it or not, is they dig big trenches and let them fill with water. And then the snakes go into them over that wet season. And eventually, the waters recede. And at the bottom of the mud, all these snakes are actually found. Of course, over there, these are used as a protein source and as a leather source. But fortunately, quite a few of these animals have made it over here into the pet trade so that we can breed them. And they're live-bearing snakes. These guys are only gonna get a couple feet long, but they're gonna have quite a few little live babies. And as you can see, they're absolutely stunning with that banding going on. And there's actually a few mutations like albino and leucistic that are now being bred in captivity. So it's a snake that you're not not going to see very often and you know I'm going to always want to highlight it. That's pretty cool. This is a T-negative albino blood python. Now it's relatively rare because the majority of the albino blood pythons that you see in the trade happen to be T-positive. Now the T stands for tyrosine which is a type of pigment within black coloring, essentially. So it's the kind of purpley look, and that's what the majority of blood pythons you see. Now this happens to be T negative, which means it's lacking all of the melanin, including the tyrosinase. And it just gives it a more orangish color. They have the red eyes, and they have none of the purple throughout them, and it's really cool. And the reason that they're a little more rare is it just wasn't around as long as the T positive animals, but these guys are absolutely stunning. And you guys know I've had a love-hate relationship with blood pythons. Right now, I've been loving them to death, and I think I'd love a T-negative albino blood python. I'm here with Tim at the Texas Rattlesnake Festival. Now, you guys may or may not understand that there's a lot of issues with rattlesnake roundups. Tim, you've got kind of an interesting thing going on. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, I, I moved to Texas about 30 years ago, and I've always had a fondness for rattlesnake. And it was really discouraging when I found out about the Texas tradition of rattlesnake roundups. And and so your solution is we're we're off, we're offering an educational event. Mm -hmm. That's just the opposite. All the animals we had on display were captive-born animals. We had a venom extraction done by Jim and Kristen from the Kentucky Reptile Zoo. And at the same time, Jim was doing extraction. Kristen was talking about the medical benefits of venom. Right. which don't come from a dead snake. Yeah. And the venom that's used at the rattlesnake roundup is not used for research. You definitely, guys, get behind the Texas Rattlesnake 
festival. It's the positive side and let's educate people so that these animals stop getting slaughtered in the numbers they are. This happens to be one of my all time favorite colubrid snakes. This is the red tail green rat snake or Ganiosoma oxycephala. And they're just so unique. You can see how she puffs her neck out and just kind of expands it. And that's a complete defensive bluff. The other thing that I'm just always been so impressed with is look at that tongue. There's really no other snake that moves its tongue like that. They just like put it out there and she just kind of tests the air and leaves it out there like that. What a cool snake. Now these guys are endemic to Southeast Asia. And as you can see, she's totally keyed in on my hand right now. She's starting to S up. She's got that whole throat blown out. Man, what an impressive snake. And just these guys' behavior and mannerism is what's always just really drawn me to them. And typically, they do relatively well in captivity, especially if you can get captive bred animals, which aren't really readily available. But just look at that incredible snake. And again, one of my all-time favorites. I tell you what, I'm getting a lot of information about bugs in this trip, but this is actually a really cool animal. I was kind of freaked out by the other ones, but this one I actually really like a lot. This is an, a rhinoceros roach or an Australian litter bug. This is the largest, heaviest roach on the planet. Now, how cool is that? Now, this isn't an adult here. It's gonna get two to three times the size, believe it or not. And this is gonna set you back about $400. Is that pretty crazy? A $400 roach, but I gotta be honest with you, this thing is absolutely cool. And again, although I'm a little bit freaked out by bugs, I think I would actually own something like that. Look at how cute that little face is. Wow, that is so cool. Reticulated pythons have certainly come a long way in the last 10 or 12 years with a ton of amazing paint jobs. And I've highlighted pied retics in the past as a matter of fact, you guys may remember I took a pretty gnarly bite in the leg just recently, but this animal really caught my eye. Now, of course, a lot of people are starting to breed that pie gene into other mutations like albino and, and golden child and all kinds of different stuff, but this is a pretty special animal here. This happens to be a paradox albino pied reticulated python. So both the pied normal and the pied albino is expressing the trait here visually and it just makes for the craziest looking reticulated python I probably have ever seen. It's almost like, uh, I don't know, like Neapolitan ice cream or something like that. You got a little chocolate, strawberry, and of course vanilla going on. <laughs> That's a cool snake. And again, when these things get big, it's just going to get more and more impressive. Reticulated pythons may be huge, but they are super, super cool. Another amazing retic that's always been high up on my want list is the guy I'm holding right now. This is the black-eyed leucistic reticulated python. Now this is all related to the platinum gene, which means you can get a handful of different white snakes, the ivories, the ultra ivories, and of course the black-eyed leucistics. But to me, that pure white animal is what I always want to see. Can you imagine an 18 or even 20 foot long reticulated python that's that big around, that's just stark white with black eyes? Guys, tell you what, every time I see one, I think I've got to have one. So I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. We certainly had a chance to see some incredible animals, and I even got to play with some kind of creepy bugs. But I think it's about time for me to head on home. What is the Texas State Reptile? If you said A, the Texas Horned Lizard, you're 100% correct. Good job. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. What an amazing show with some cool animals and as always, incredible people. And as always, I was Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday only on Animal Bites TV.